Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Build a Compiler with LLVM and MLIR. This is Samir, your host, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about the basic steps we need to do before we can jump into steering the development and building the entire project. Um, let's start by installing some of the requirements. I'm not going to actually show you how to install them. I'm going to tell you what to do and like the heads, give you some heads ups before uh, actually doing them. But uh, that being said, still, we need to talk about a few of the requirements which are really important. The most important one is the LLVM project. I'm using Linux and I assume that you're using a POSIX system, either Linux or Mac, uh, Mac OS. I, I don't know much about Windows operating system, so I'm going to stick to what I know. On, on Linux systems, most of the distributions provide LLVM via different packages from their package repository, uh, like in form of pre-built packages. Um, but I guess like in order to get a better result, we need to compile LLVM from uh, the source code because this way we're going to learn more about the LLVM itself and different uh, bits and pieces and also the requirements, the specific requirements of Serene at this stage. For example, like we're going to use MLIR later on and we're using a utility which is called TableGen from LLVM and MLIR has its own uh, variant of uh, TableGen called uh, MLIR TableGen and uh, previously, some of the folks that are working on the certain compiler actually had an issue with the MLIR table gen, which wasn't available from uh, their package repository and vice versa. So uh, we're going to talk about it today. Also, it would be nice to have uh, Ccache installed, which is going to uh, speed up your compilation process uh, by a lot. So let's jump into it. Uh, we have a readme file in the serine root directory um, which contains some of the instructions we need to use to install LLVM. First of all, uh, we have a builder script which I'm going to go through it today. Um, but for now, uh, builder uh, there has a subcommand called setup which is going uh, which is going to install some of the git hooks that you need to use with the Serene project, like Clang format and stuff like that. Just make sure that you run this subcommand first before doing anything else. We have other dependencies beside the LLVM like CMake, Ninja, Doxygen, if we need to create the documents, uh, Valgrind, Valgrind, I, I really don't know how to pronounce it but it's like useful, really useful tool to figure out the problem with memory leaks and stuff like that. And obviously Ccache. You can install all of them from the package repository, your package repository, but I highly recommend to install LLVM from source. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Actually, this thing go away. Okay. My, I myself, I, compile LLVM from source from the Git repository, like the latest development, because sometimes to times I need to contribute something to LLVM. Like, I don't know, since LLVM supports uh, C++ 14 and I'm on C++ 17, the setting project is in uh, C++ 17 times to times, I need to patch some of this stuff. That's why I'm using the uh, latest development version, but you can, you're totally safe to use LLVM version 12, which is the current stable version. All you need to do is to either clone or download the source code and CD, in, like create a build directory for wherever you want, basically, like any other CMake project and invoke the CMake command to create, to generate the build system based on Ninja for you. Um, there's a an intensive uh, like intense documentation on the build system on llvm.org which you can uh, read and 
learn about every single option here but i'm going to talk about just the, about the most important ones uh we need to build at least for x86 architecture so if you build your llvm like this it's going to support compiling your code to x86 uh, architecture also make sure uh, make sure to install llvm on release mode if you go for debug mode it's going to take forever to compile and on top of that building any any llvm related code like serene is going to take a long long time but sometimes you need to do that because like about two a month ago actually I had a nasty memory leak. I couldn't figure out how, where it was. So I had to compile everything in debug mode to be able to track it through LLVM. And uh, it turns out to be my own code, not LLVM. But that's a heads up. Make sure that you compile LLVM in release mode. Also, um, these are the different projects of LLVM that we need to install to in order to Build Serene, obviously Clang the compiler, we use it in, uh, intensively. intensively. Uh, LLDB, which is LLVM debugger, it's quite nice and the user experience is perfect. LLD, which is the linker of LLVM, it's quite faster than um, the native GNU LD. Also, it has a better user experience. So uh, it has some highlighting and stuff like that, which makes makes it easier to figure out the issue. MLIR itself, obviously, Clang Tools Extra and Compiler Runtime. Um, there's two other flags, which is like, I want Clang to be my compiler. If you don't have Clang installed, you, you should avoid using these two, but you can install Clang from your own package repository, use the native Clang to compile LLVM and Clang from source code and then use the compiled version instead. After you've done this, all you need to do is to build, build the LLVM using this command, make sure that you built everything, test the MLIR uh, install, uh, compilation, and finally install it wherever you want. The only thing you need to do after this is to make sure that the bin directory of your installation is in your path actually so i done that already actually i'm not going to show you because there's some private information there but it's it's quite simple just put the bin directory in your path and you're good to go just a heads up <laughs> compiling llvm is going to take a long time on my box, it takes like an hour, an hour and a half. It might like, and I have a fairly modern laptop. It's going to even take more time on a, uh, obviously a weaker uh, PC. So bear that in mind, expect a long compilation process and don't curse me after you <laughs> jumped into it. Um, with LLVM installed, we are, Good to go. We can start. Um, install, sorry, we can actually start building the Serene project. In order to build the Serene project, we have a builder script which is kind of a wrapper around uh, CMake itself. Um, just to stay on course, let me. Okay, before jumping to the builder script, I'm just going to mention uh, Ccache one more time. If you have Ccache installed, the builder script is going to pick it up and use it by default. So I highly recommend to have it installed. It's easy to use, easy to configure, and it's going to be a lifesaver. Times to times I have to come recompile and rebuild the project uh, a lot, not just in other projects, even LLVM. Like I, build, I built LLVM like 14 times uh, before. Using C, uh, Ccache would save a lot of time for you. Basically what it does, it caches the object files when you build something 
And when you want to build that one again, if it has a cache for that object file, it's going to use the cache instead of recompiling the uh, whatever you're compiling. So it's going to speed up the uh, compilation process quite a lot. I have to thank Puya for this. He implemented uh, C cache support in the builder script just to give him a shout out. Um, let's move forward with the builder script. So it's quite simple. It's just a bash script, nothing more with some configuration in it. It's more than enough for now, but later on when we advance in the project, we might migrate to a more elegant solution, but it's fine for now. Uh, let's stick to uh, what we got and go through it. Basically, uh, we just get the first argument as the sub command and do some configuration, set some uh, environment variables and then run that sub command. That's, that's all we do here. Basically look for C cache. If it was there, use it. Otherwise, just use Clang. By the way, we need to have uh, Clang. That's why we install LLVM from source, including uh, the Clang compiler. Uh, we use LLD as well. LLD is the linker for LLVM. And when you build LLVM from source, it already creates, uh, sorry, compiles LLVM and builds LLD. Um, if you remember, I just talked about it in, um, in this episode. Also, by default, we use the address sanitizer to detect memory leaks and things like that. A heads up uh, about the build script since it's like super simple and we make some made some assumption before creating this thing we only should invoke the build script when we are at this root of the source tree right so that's how that's because we use this form of like yeah, look path lookups basically there's a more elegant way to kind of uh, figure out the path by looking at where, where this B layer script lives in the file system, but that's too much for now. We want to keep it simple and uh, that's fine. Um, we have several functions, which each function represent not one, uh, represent a sub command, but not in a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping. Some of them are just like helper functions. Um, and we have a big switch case here, which go through the sub commands and try to match them against some strings and then call the correspondent function for each of those sub commands. Several of, I, I, I just go through some of the most important commands. Obviously the build command is the most important one, which cleans the uh, old build and generate the build system again and compiles everything from scratch. Um, we have build release, which does the same thing, but in the release mode rather than the debug mode. Compile uh, is a sub command which doesn't generate the build system. So it just recompiles all the changes that you made to the uh, project. I'm going to show you like the exact, uh, some examples when I, I'm done with this file, but basically uh, you would use compile quite a lot. You make a change to the project, you call compile again to compile your uh, changes, or you can even use uh, like a daemon or something to watch the file system and call it for you. I'm not doing that, but that's totally up to you. Um, and the run command, which calls the whatever, when you call the run sub command and pass any argument to it, it's going to call the built binary of Serene and pass those arguments to that. Also, there's a compile and test um, sub command, which basically compiles the changes and run the test cases again. Um, there should be another target call. Oh yeah. So we have a test subcommand as well, which basically is exactly like build, builds everything from scratch, but on top of it, it runs the test cases as well. Uh, another important one is memcheck. Memcheck builds the entire project, 
but with Valgrind and it's really good if you, if you have a memory leak and you want to look like figure out where the memory leak, uh, memory leak is in and try to debug it and that's basically it let's uh, let's show you an example here i am in the green directory and i want to just like if you run builder you see the help message for every subcommand but i'm going to just build the uh, whole thing it generate it invokes the cmake command to generate the build system using ninja and then compiles everything uh it might actually not it might not work at the moment because i have some changes in the uh in the source tree that i didn't finish and probably it's going to fail but uh you'll like you get how it works and actually that uh, this one can be a good example of when to use compile i'm going to stash my changes and invoke the comp uh, compile command again to see the difference while this thing is compiling, let's talk about the next thing in the list. So um, before jumping into, sorry, before jumping into the source tree structure, let me talk about the dev.org really quick. There's a file in the root of the source tree called dev.org which basically is an org file oh by the way uh, if you're not an emacs user you might not know like what this format is and like why everything is kind of i guess weird uh i'm using emacs in, uh, intensively and this thing is called org mode which is available for other editors and ids as well it's quite nice it helps you to organize organize your documents and your life basically uh better i'm we're, we're using it quite a lot and the dev.org is a, actually a org file it contains some to do's like really high level to do's of things that i want to do and some some like if anything com comes to mind later on, I'm going to add it to this list and I pick them uh, based on the priority from uh, from the list here. Also, here I basically listed everything that happens, every single uh, resource that I studied over past two years that like, re relates to Serene in any way, even for um, other implementation that we have like the Rust implementation, I I basically put everything in here. There's like really nice, really nice resource base here. You can find everything. Basically, if you read everything that is in this list, uh, you're more than ready to, to work on setting already. So even uh, if you're new to serene please have a look at this file especially at the in at the to do section you might find something here that piques your interest and start working on it uh okay let's have a look at the yeah as i expected the compilation failed so i have to look into let's stash the changes okay now if i run the compile command since we don't need to generate the build system uh, again the build system is there we just have to recompile everything as you can see it just compiles three it's it wants to compile three files and that's it well um Actually, I need to talk about the CMake files as well, but that can be a little bit too much for this episode. So I'm going to leave that to the next episode for now. So we just compiled the uh, compiler and we can run the um, compiler that we just compiled with uh, the run sub command and passed a full path of a serine file to it like the hello world is like super simple it just has a function in it right now i guess um, i'm going to talk about the com 
like the interface in uh, in depth later but just to show you how it works at the moment um so as you can see i just invoked the compiler asked it to show me some slir which i'm going to tell you what it is later uh it parses the file analyze the file like the syntax and everything and in the output you can see the sli the result of compiling that source code into slir uh that's how you use the run command and the builder script is quite simple i'm pretty sure you're going to be fine with it and now let's jump into a really high level introduction to the source tree and to help you navigate through the source code so um yeah so basically uh, we have a source tree which contains several directories but the most important directories are the bin directory which is basically the serine.cpp file lives there which is the uh, in turn the entry point to the project basically we are going to compile serine.cpp using clang and it's the result of the compilation would be serine c which is the serine compiler the build directory is it's obvious it's just temporary and the build relies in uh, in this directory the builder script cmake file not important for now uh, talk, we talked about the dev.org docs is quite obvious but the include directory is uh, where we store our header files inside the serine directory it um, you can find the same structure in a, almost any c c plus plus project uh, it's it's not uh, that uncommon the resource directory is just for uh, the website of serine some uh, images for the logo a script directory contains some of the git hooks and small scripts that we use with git not important but the most important of all is the serine directory there's two subdirectory in this let me actually okay the serine directory itself itself is the host of all the cpp files all the implementation files for different header files and the test directory is quite obvious we include like we use uh, this directory to store our tests the using the src directory is not common uh, among c c plus plus directories usually everyone uses a directory called lib uh, but you know I don't know why but I, but I chose to use src so um i guess that's uh quite brief and enough for now about the uh, source tree all you need to do is where to uh, look for the files also if there's a header file the implementation file lives by the exact same name in the uh, src directory some of the header files are self-contained and doesn't have any implementation i mean they contain their own implementation um and i guess that's it uh so that's it for today folks um in the next episode my plan is to go over some of the high levels and basic concepts of designing a programming language and also some of the pros and cons of the llvm so thanks for uh, sticking around and uh, watching the video series. If you're interested, please subscribe to this channel and hope to see you in the next episode.